Today I'm working on my 335i. Uh, notice I had an issue with my angel eyes. If you've been following my channel, you'll see that I had uh, changed my angel eyes out to um, from halogen to LED, and I bumped the voltage up on them by coating them, and I also coated them to be my DRLs. So if I unlock the car, you can see only the driver's side comes on, and I think I know what the issue is here. Ultimately, um, I had one of my ballasts go out, driver's side ballast. I, I actually drove up to Canada, and uh, while I was up there, I had my headlight go out. And I had the long drive back home to Texas, and planned on driving some of that at night, so I needed to fix it while I was up there. So I went to a friend's shop, took out the headlight, changed, ordered a ballast, threw it in, and when I was in there, I noticed that the, all the wiring in the headlight was completely cracked and dry rotted, I guess from the extreme heat down here in Texas. So while I was in there, I re-shrink wrapped all the wiring inside there and cleaned it up. It took a lot of work, but uh, you know, it took about an hour to do it, but I redid that whole headlight so that I wouldn't have any issues, and while I was in there doing the ballast, I might as well tackle it but I didn't have the time to go tackle this side. And, you know, it hadn't really acted up. I didn't even look at it, but I'm sure it's completely cracked. So what I gotta do now is take the front bumper off so that I can um, uh, take the headlight out, get inside there, and take a look at the condition of the wiring to re-shrink wrap everything and, to, and also see if that uh, angel is any good. So my first step's gonna be to pull that front bumper off. So I'm just going to pull these rubber strips off. There's some torque screws up at the top, I'll tell you what size they are. These are T30 torques. I threw a jack under the car, I'm not underneath it, I'm just up near the front of the bumper. So I can get to these uh, 8 mils. There's a couple holding these little lip pieces I have. Just the two bolts to hold this on. One on each side. I'm actually missing a couple screws here because when I bought this car, it didn't even have this cover. So it's just tucked in underneath there, but you would have normally had these one, two, three, four screws across the front here, holding this under tray to, the, to your bumper. That would have to come off. <clears throat> this inner fender liner, um, there's, yeah, you're gonna have And this just kind of clips in here. So you can pull that away. I think I'm good there. So I have to order the clips, metal clips that go onto the tray and the screws. I just want to get this installed for aerodynamics because it wasn't with the car when I bought it. Yeah, there's a couple screws on the inside where the wheel is. I'll show you that now. So you gotta turn your wheel to one side and then there's one right here. The goal is to be able to pull this away. That, that little grill's for the oil cooler and these bolts can stay bolted up. We have another one right there. So 
the idea is to be able to get this cover away so that you can access a couple bolts in here. I think I have to go for this one too, just to be able to pull the actual shield away. So I'm going to do that one and then I'll show you when I'm pulling it away. So taking that one last bolt off over here should give you just enough access to be able to see. It'll be hard to show you, but those there's two 8 mil bolts, you can see them there. So I'm going to get those out now so I can pop the bumper off the side. I got to do that two-handed, but I can just move this away, stick my ratchet in there, undo those. This will pop off then. So I got those two bolts out. This is what they look like. Um, nothing special really. And um, <clears throat> so basically I used this long extension, made it easier for getting in here and being able to get to this bolt up near the front. So now once you've done that, this will pop off. You gotta do the same on the other side, but that's pretty much all there is to getting the top released. So I'll do the same on the other side and I'll come back to you when I'm ready to pull the bumper up. So that's that. I can pull this off now. But I want to make sure that you get the, the harness to the pocket before I pull it right off. I'll just do that I feel. Instead of somewhere safe where it won't tip over. Now we have access to the headlight and we gotta pull it out. We're gonna use that same T30 Torx that we used to get the top of the bumper released. I'm gonna start on top here. There's two T30. Take this off so you don't lose it. I'll get the light to show you the rest. <clears throat> you can see two right here. Once you get these crack free, they're very easy to work with. They, you know, I'm in a southern climate, so this car has no rust, but I don't think they'll get rust to you no matter where you're located. Now there's one right here. That's it, those are all the bolts. So now let's pull straight forward. And be prepared to come around the back side and disconnect the harnesses. So get it forward a little bit first. That should be enough access. Here on the bottom side here, right there, there's this harness that's clipped into the actual headlight um, assembly housing. So just disconnect that for your fog light so that that's free. And then come around to the top. Go after our uh, connectors. What you can see here, kind of want to do this two-handed but there's tabs on either side that you squeeze on both sides. And it's definitely a two-hand job. I'm gonna do that and then I'll slide that connector off and I'll show you after. Yeah, so there's just these two push pins on either side. And then you pull, you need two hands, squeeze here and push with the other. 
and then that's your assembly. All of it comes out just that one harness, and at the bottom there's that little fog light harness that kind of clips into the bottom of this housing, just like that. That's what you're left with. So I'm gonna take the headlight out of the actual um, housing assembly and we'll take a look on the inside to see what the wiring looks like. So really the only thing holding it in right now, I put it flat down on some uh, microfiber towels. And there's just one more T30 screw here, right there. support the headlight but there's this one T30 screw and FYI this is what would be involved if you want to change out your headlight ballast so that's the bracket that holds everything together that can get set aside and now we gotta look inside the headlight to see how things are looking this is your uh, active um, adaptive headlight module this is where your angel light goes but what we're going to do is be careful of these clips they can be brittle especially in a hot climate here's how i want to tackle trying to get inside here Use a plastic pry tool if you want to play things safe. So now let's take a look at the condition of this wiring. For better access, I'm just going to remove this uh, ballast. It is. T20. Okay, got the ballast removed. We can already see signs of what I was talking about. So, if you look at this, the wires are flaking away. This is what I'm talking about. You can see the wiring flaking away. It's basically asking for a short or a problem. Not all of them are that rough. This is in way better shape than the other side was. But still, you can see the wiring is exposed and that needs to be covered up. So I gotta deep pin that and slide a heat shrink tube over it and then uh, use a heat gun to seal it. I'll just do that one by one as I find problems. So I removed a couple things just to get it out of the way. This harness that goes to the headlight bulb from the ballast <clears throat> and uh, now we need to get inside this connector. We got to push this connector into the headlight. So hopefully you can make that out. This will collapse into the headlight. Okay, so you stick a, a pick on either side of these tabs. 
and you can push it into the headlay. Now, we can bring it, route it up to where we can work with it. And you can already see the severity here. This is a bad, you know? You can see that. It's all flaking and chunking away. You can see that green wire is all falling apart. So that's probably why my angel eye isn't working. And before something worse happens, I gotta tackle this. Another example of how bad it is. Check out that ground wire. And I think where there could be, this is the high beams or DRLs. I just pulled it out. Up the ball, see that uh, zip tie in there? There's wire breakage underneath there, so there, that's just asking for a short. So what I'm gonna do is just cut that and slide individual, I deep pin this and slide and get rid of those zip ties and slide individual shrink wraps over the whole wire. And then re-pin re it one at a time so you don't mix up where, where the pin was. So I didn't get that on camera, but I cut one of the zip ties here just to get some slack. Now I'm gonna go inside there and cut that zip tie, but I don't, I wanna pay attention to that. I don't wanna do that on camera. I gotta do that close up so that I can make sure I don't snip wires or cause a short or anything. So here's uh, what I did. I pulled this uh, angel eye harness up and, and out. Here's my uh, ground for that. This is the high beams. This is the harness that drives a lot of your your active adaptive headlights and all that, which still work. And what I noticed was, even on my other headlight, when I did my um, when I did the driver's side, uh, the wires are fine about halfway through. I think it's the heat of the DRL or the daytime running lamps that cook this, which is unfortunate. Um, so because this car used to run regular high beams as your DRLs for all those years plus the combination of heat in Houston probably made those wires brittle and, and wrecked the plastic coating on them um, because everything from about here onward where it's kind of shielded from heat is fine it's completely fine so you just have to slide shrink wrap tubing about halfway down the wire till it ends up about here just so you can get the heat gun on and uh, where I'm sticking my finger right now the wiring is in good shape past it it's cracking barely the high beams are just a mess the angel eyes are just a mess and you know it's kind of unfortunate it's a definite cost cutting measure on, on whoever manufactured these headlights because it, you go look at the wiring on my uh, e30 30 year old wiring almost and it's like soft and supple still it feels like silicone like a rubbery silicone soft coating versus this hard plastic i've seen this before i used to have a contour ages ago and it's just basically cheap wiring uh, cheap insulation that causes this and I don't think it's acceptable for the cost you know given how much it would cost to replace this headlight but you know it is what it is I gotta fix it now I don't want problems because if one of these were to short it's connected via CAN bus to the to communicate regarding um, the state of your uh, modules I mean the state of your bulbs if your headlight bulb goes out, or your high beam, or your your angel eyes, you'll get a message on your iDrive or on your cluster. If you short the communication wire, you could fry. Some, you could be a oh man, it could be a mess. You could fry parts of the CAN bus. You could fry the NFRM module. It could be a disaster. So before it became that kind of problem, I didn't want to even mess with it in a rush. I wanted to do this properly. So. I'm going to re-shrink wrap all this wiring and then I'm going to uh, heat it up with a heat gun and then tuck it back into place. I don't know if my angel eye is bad or not even, but I knew I had to do this. So maybe I can just test that. I would have liked to have longer pieces of heat shrink tube, but I only have pieces about that long, but it's okay. I can slide them down and then just build them up. So this is how you do the repinning. Get a, a 
pick. Slide that up. And if you push down right here, you'll be able to slide the wire out. And remember like, where you took it out. So this is in the top right. There's two spots. You pull. You have to press it once. It pulls out a little bit, and then you're gonna press it again over here to get it all the way out. Slide that out. Grab your heat shrink. And go right in there. So I'm gonna build these up. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough. I may have to go buy some. Like so. If you're gonna end up with a long piece. This will be fine. This is just a little bit long, so I'm gonna cut it. <clears throat> there. So I'll heat shrink that now. I mean, I'll uh, heat it up. That's basically it. There's no real overlap. I mean, it's overlapping a bit, so there's nothing really exposed. I mean, it's real piece of electrical tape, but I'm not worried about that. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm gonna do that to the rest of them and throw it back together. The wire leading to my um, high beams and angel eyes. One of them has got green crusties in it. And starting to fall apart so that's kind of important just wanted to throw that out there so I'm gonna re wrap that together re-solder it and then I'll uh, shrink it I'm back from Harbor Freight it's the best I could do it on some long pieces of heat shrink tube hopefully this will shrink down enough so let's give it a try So you gotta leave a little bit of spacing from the end of this here so that it can still 
slide into the connector after. So let me cut it right about there. Seems to be shrinking down pretty good. That works. So I'm going to finish up now. So for this long cable here, your um, ground cable to your angel eye, what I had to do is just cut it in the middle slide a heat shrink tube down all the way to the end and then slide a heat shrink tube up twisted it tight and then slid it over so it's a secure connection that way I can get it over both ends because it wouldn't fit over the end of this otherwise for this one here um, the way it branches off here into a couple wires I couldn't slide a heat shrink tube on unless I went from this side so you gotta lift up on this black plastic here and then there's a little piece of plastic on the inside you lift up on so you can pull this out so I'm gonna shrink that and then I'll shrink I'll just wrap some electrical tape around this one because there's no good way to get over that one okay, so I'm done with this connector now so you gotta push down this and then I gotta push this back down and that's it that's for the connector that leads to the ballast now, and I this wire is actually in good shape luckily all the way down just a little bit of damage down here so I, got, I use really high quality electrical tape pinched it over like that it works should be fine and it wasn't uh, it's not even cracked just a little bit here so and, you know still looking pretty horrible I'm gonna go through this all now and make it look good and I'll come back to you for the wire that was most damaged this one here right here I um, just cut it because it, it joins into one, the two grounds join into the one connector here. I wanted to be able to slide heat shrink tube on it and I want to get this one as far down as I can. Maybe a little tricky because of the size of this connector at the end. Yeah, <clears throat> I may have to use the larger one and then just kind of tape it into place. It won't shrink down enough to like Completely, but these are the ones that deteriorated the most the ground wires. Maybe they get the most hot. I don't know But when I want to get it way into the headlight Can't really go that far anyway See how much I can shrink that down. It should be enough to stop the thing from sliding back and forth and then down in here it's the wires in okay shape it's fine no cracks down there so now I got to deal with this mess I'd like to just change this piece of wire if I could see if I can find a piece and just change it out because it's 
It's crappy. That piece there. So I'm gonna go look for a piece of wire. So I couldn't find a suitable size wire, so I'm just gonna I wrapped it together and I'm gonna solder it uh, as one piece again. So that's that. Now I'm going to snap this connector back down. So all the cracked wiring is being repaired. The two worst, well the worst parts were the parts leading to the angel eyes. These two wires here. This is ground. And this is positive. Um, the connector leading to the ballast was in rough shape. And the ends of these wires here going into this connector were in kind of rough shape um, and they've all been you know, all the way into the headlight wherever cracking stopped there's heat shrink going over that point and then over here these wires are soft and fine so I think something to do with the heat of the the angel eye bulb and the heat of the DRLs so angel eyes when, the, when they're on at night and the uh, DRLs by default, this car is quoted to have the, came from the factory with the halogen high beam, a lower, had a lower wattage to run your DRLs. So those were the worst and the ground connectors were in the roughest shape. And then the ballast and whatnot. So everything's looking good here. Nothing else is cracked. What I'd recommend next is just uh, take the headlight and Shake it out. There's gonna be bits and pieces of wires. You can see them falling. It's kind of crazy, but let's. Get all those bits out, as you can see. Tons of little pieces of wire came out. And I don't know if this LED is now fried because of maybe a short you know, the CAN bus, I think it cuts power when it senses a problem with one of the bulbs. I was getting the message for that parking lamp malfunction. So, um, you know, as I said, some of these wires here, I don't know which ones are actually communicating. I think, I don't know, I think it ties into something here. I, I can't really tell you how it works, but all I know is the... You, you, I, in my opinion, you're asking for disaster by leaving it like this. Big problems. So, I hate to give you guys potential scary news on your car, but if you have random headlight problems, you're burning up ballasts, or you're going through bulbs, and you're getting weird airs that you just can't clear, chances are it's the wiring in your headlight. I don't know if this is because it's in a hot climate, I'm in Houston, or if all E90s have this problem. 
it's pretty bad to be honest with you I think it's kind of unfortunate that this is happening the cars not even 10 years old but this video is to show you how to fix that if my angel eye is working after this I'll be happy if not I'm gonna to toss it back on the car and order another one toss it you know I actually don't even know if it just failed naturally because it's a cheap eBay angel eye and it was drunk and I put too much voltage to it by running it at higher uh, by coding that an FRM module to run higher voltage to that I don't know but um, maybe they'll exchange it doubt it but that's basically it I'm gonna get this all reconnected into the headlight now and then reassemble and we'll put it back on the car Let's see how much I can show you on camera here real, real quick the first thing I'd want to do is route get the get these uh, connectors routed up to where the the angel eye bulb here Maybe a little tough, but so there's one now. So I got that through now. I'm going to route this down that's high beams as I said I got my two speed connectors run up through here now this has to come through here for where the ballast lives and this connector here has to come back over here it snaps back in here ballast connection Speed connectors for the angel eyes. Nothing is bound up or routed in an unusual way. At least it feels okay. Try to let everything stretch out a bit. Now, I took this bulb out just to have some room. So I'll put that back in now. Just clips on like that. Now this harness, I took it out. It goes here. So I restored the connections to the angel eye the same way that uh, they came off, speed connector on the left. We'll snap that back in place. And yeah, I'm just gonna put this cover back on here. Do a final check, one final shakedown. Piece 
outside. So there. Um, all that's cleaned up, and I didn't zip tie it the same way. I wanted things to just be free to move if they need to. There's lots of room in there. Um, I checked all this wiring. No cracks and no brittleness at all running to the active uh, headlights, adaptive headlights. Everything's fine there. Um, I only found one spot where it was questionable, and I just put a piece of electrical tape over for safety. So that should, I hope, last the life of the car. The other side's been done the same way. So we're in good shape. Just gonna restore this cup connection and put it back on the car. Looking good. So that's how you restore the wiring in your headlight if it's acting up. Let's put put it back on the car, put the bumper back on. Before putting the bumper back on, I'll connect the headlight, go key on and see if we got headlights again. I mean, if we got angel eyes again. If not, I'm not too upset. I'll order another set of angel eyes. Probably a better quality one this time. I gotta mount it back in the bracket, but obviously installation is the opposite of removal, so I'll get working on that now and uh, get back at you when I'm uh, checking out uh, how they look on the car again. I realized that I told you to take off this uh, screw on the car. You didn't really have to. The two that go sideways. One over here. I'm putting it back on, on the floor so that it, it all lines up properly. Leave those two on until you get it out of the car. So let's go back to the car now. So uh, the angel eye itself is actually bad. <clears throat> it's not the it's not the wiring, but I had to deal with that. As you saw, it's, it was pretty serious. So. So don't buy that. Uh, don't buy that angel eye if you're watching. I have a video up showing you cheap uh, eBay angel eyes and how they look. Uh, I'm not going to recommend it. You know, as I said, if I put cheap parts on my car, I'm going to let you guys know if you should stay away. So anyway, I feel a lot better because now my both my headlights don't have a bunch of cracked up, chewed up wiring. And. Uh, I'm going to order another set of angel eyes now, try to find something a little bit better quality and now that I'm pumping higher voltage to it through the custom coating, let's see how bright I can get these. I'm going to try to get something a little nicer now, so look out that for another video. Anyway, this video shows you how to rebuild the wiring inside your headlights if you're having issues with your headlights that don't seem to make sense and you're kind of stuck. So thanks for watching and good luck. Oh, <laughs>